The following is a production of New Mexico State University. Welcome to the stunning Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center in sunny Austin, Texas. This park was founded by the First Lady in 1982. I'm here today with Dr. Robert Brunig, known better here as Dr. Bob, who's executive director of the center. You're gonna tell us some things about some of the plants here. Okay. Well, first, um, this is um, one of the plants we have growing here in our hummingbird garden. And all of these plants uh, are attractive to hummingbirds. You notice it has that long red tubular flower, and that's particularly good for hummingbirds. This is a plant from the Transpecos, Texas, just west of here. Uh, and it also occurs in Arizona and New Mexico. And it's a relative of lamb's ears. It's in the mint family. A lot and, of people know lamb's ears, yep. and this one's a different lamb's ears. It doesn't feel like a lamb's ear. Here's a plant I know is a native, but it's used throughout the southwest and landscapes, the red yucca. Mm, it is. It's a beautiful landscape plant because it has a nice form and it has a nice flower stalk. It's uh, Hesperallo, Parviflora, or also known as red yucca. A good plant for landscapes throughout the Southwest. A great, a great plant for uh, the landscapes of all throughout the Southwest. Recommend it. And the verbenas? And, and, and a great for another one for hummingbirds. Okay. And verbenas as well are throughout the Southwest? Uh, yeah, this, uh, this is one that actually crept into our hummingbird display. <laughs> I was going to say, it doesn't uh, look like a hummingbird but plant. A, but it's a beautiful landscape plant. It's a prairie verbena. This plant and all the plants that you see here at the Wildflower Center are native to the Edwards Plateau or immediately adjacent to the Edwards Plateau. And the whole idea behind the Wildflower Center is that try to encourage people to look at the diversity in, literally in their own backyards or in their own region and to connect with their own natural heritage and bring it into their gardens. So there's more to the wildflower here than just the Texas blue bonnet. Exactly, but speaking of blue bonnets, let's go take a look at some. Okay. Wow, this is really pretty. It's enough to make a Texan proud and I ought to know because I grew up in Texas. Well, actually, this is the state flower of Texas. Um, there are six species of blue bonnets in Texas, but this is the one that is, grows in this part of Texas, Lupinus texensis, mm -hmm. or they're all known as the Texas blue bonnet. It really doesn't like to leave Texas, does it? Well, this one is, um, only you only find it in central Texas. Of course, there are many, many species of lupin all over the United States, mm -hmm. but um, so what we would say to you is find that native lupin and bring it into your yard. Don't try to import a Texas blue bonnet outside of Texas. I've seen others try to grow the Texas blue bonnet outside of Texas. They had difficulty. What I like though is the variation in this. There's different colors within different flowers. Yes, uh, sometimes you even get uh, white blue bonnets. And uh, now people are doing horticultural uh, experimentation and even growing maroon blue bonnets yeah, so if you can have such a thing. Texas Aggies love maroon. <laughs> they do indeed. And speaking of maroon, we got the wine cups the right wine here growing cup with, here it. Is, Looks good uh, with it. I love these wine cups. They, they to me, just say spring and uh, they're one of our most vivid uh, spring wildflowers. And in other parts of the southwest it's known as the poppy mallow. They're, they are in the mallow family. That's and right. They're um, excellent plants throughout the southwest. They're a great plant. Um, uh, and of course there are many species of wine cup but this is one that we particularly see here in Texas and you notice how well it works with the blue bonnets I was noticing that yes and, and that's one of the things we really encourage is people to really think about how to combine different wildflowers to get a really nice um, array of colors in the garden not just have one thing but a, a mixture. You did and that right over there. Exactly. There we've got, uh, we've got actually got a number of wildflowers in that bed, but right now uh, we just have the blue bond and the Drummond's flocks, but mm -hmm. boy, do they look nice together. Red, white in the blue bonnet, and then the blue in the blue bonnet. So there we are. We, patriotic bed. <laughs> we sure do. If you just had fragrance in the blue bonnets, that'd be the perfect flower then. Well, I guess you just can't have, you know, nothing's perfect, no one's perfect, and um, I guess we'll just have to enjoy it for the, the color. It's nice. There are other plants though, that do smell good. Yes, there you are. You got that in the sensory garden? Yes, we do. You want to go look? Let's look. All right. Well, this one looks like the betony, but it's not, is it? No, it's a salvia, salvia romeriana. 
but it's in our sensory, sensory garden because it's one of our fragrant uh, salvias. Salvia like. is a sage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it smells good. And then this is a chocolate flower. I know why hmm. it's here. It's it it smells like what? Well, any chocoholic knows what a chocolate flower smells. It doesn't taste like chocolate, but it smells like chocolate. So that's a wonderful plant to have in a sensory garden. Um, here's cherry sage or autumn sage. And it really belongs in here. It's um, a wonderful plant for its smell. Ah, yes, it does smell good. Well, Dr. Bob, thank you for the tour of the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center. It's beautiful. And it's been wonderful to have you here. Thanks for coming. The proceeding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.